I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another NetCast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 314, where I'm going to show you how to calculate or display inventory lag. And this is method one. I'll show you method two. This is in response to a question sent to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com by Dave. It actually made my day to hear from Dave and to have an association with him in the Quantrix community. And I hope that you'll make my day and ask me a question at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com so that I can help you master Quantrix, because that's my goal. Anyway, Dave has a matrix here. He has purchases coming into that matrix. And what he wants to do is he wants to then have those purchases come into inventory. And those purchases are by customer. I have customers as shown here, A, B, C, D. And the lag of the purchases needs to, as they come into inventory, needs to be based off of the customer or where based off of some parameter that is input down in here. So in customer A, their inventory comes in two months after the purchases. And customer B, it actually comes in the month of the purchase. So how can I do this? Well, we can see here that there's been made a couple tries with this with some recursion. Recursion is a little tough to do because you can't put a variable in here very easily. All right. So this is how I would solve this problem. I would actually go out and create a new matrix. And I would bring my time element over to that matrix and go ahead and get rid of these categories. And then I would go ahead and rename D1 year month index. And then I would add the formula that says hashtag year month. And what that does is that brings back a index for the specified year month combination. Okay. Then what I would do is I would go out and probably just write a select statement that says something like this. I would say in my solution, Let's say enrich solution purchases into inventory. I want to, this is equal to a select. I want to select my purchases across my year and month, and I have to do that because I'm doing it in the same matrix uh, as the data. So I specify year, month. And what is my key list? My key list is actually off of this year month index over here. And the value that I want to return is actually the index of the year month that I'm on. So again, I would go year month index, and then I would subtract any inventory lag found down here in customers. If I go ahead and I do that, I get a pound size error. So that's nothing you want to have. So let me try to figure out that pound size error really quick. Go here to my dependency inspector. I see year month, and I bet I know what's wrong here. You can see I have 39 items here. Here I only have 15 in my key list. I need to specify in my key list that I also want to go across the entire array of year and month. Okay. When I go ahead and do that, now you can see that I get rid of my pound size error. This is customer D. And you can see that when customer D has a purchase of 250,000 units, or whatever the case may be, they actually come in in the following month. If I were to put zero here, then I see that they actually shift over here to month zero. If I were to put three in here in July, I would expect to see them to shift over all the way here to September. Again, if I were to have change this say I made it 10 units so you can see the change so then indeed you can see that it's three months after I bought it just like it's parameterized here so that's how I would go ahead and kind of offset when my purchases are coming into my inventory is simply by using a select a statement with a year month index this type of functionality of year month is something that I use in nearly every one of my models 
I always have a matrix one. I actually call it my uh, date date reference matrix reference matrix. Okay, so that's how I would encourage you to do it, Dave. I think this is a very scalable way to do it, and it's it's super quick because it's using the select statement in Quantrix. If you have any questions about Quantrix, like I said before, please make my day and reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. And I hope that you'll join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority because I love Quantrix and I really want to make you a Quantrix master. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.